Hello friends, welcome to a new video from DevSchool. This time we're going to see how we can implement an activity indicator in a very simple way in our Xamarin Forms based applications. This is one of the many questions I frequently receive. And we'll see how we can do this thanks to a free Nugget package. To start this demonstration, we have created a project based on Xamarin Forms. We are going to run this application in the emulator. OK, we see that we have a quite simple interface. We have a button here that says Calculate, which is really not doing anything. We're going to add some functionality to this Calculate button. So we look for the button element, and we're only going to create an event handler for the clicked event. We're going to directly implement the activity indicator, but it will work the same way from any view model. What I'm going to do in this event handler is to add a line. Specifically, we're going to call a task delay and we're going to indicate that this task is going to take or be delayed five seconds to be executed. We have to add an async for this method so we don't have any problem. And finally, we're going to display through a display alert task finished, comma, as a message, the task has been finished, and as a button message, OK. If we run the application again at this moment, we notice that if we press the calculate button again and wait for five seconds, we get this task finished message. But what if the user is using the application? If they hit calculate, observe how they can still interact with various elements of the user interface. Suddenly a message appears, but the user is still able to interact with the application. In fact, when we perform some type of processing, our goal is to lock the user interface so that the task can be completed without changing the values in the text boxes, as in this example. I can even hit this button multiple times and guess what will happen. Tasks will pile up and notice that these windows keep popping up repeatedly. We could add an activity indicator type element directly from our main page.xaml. However, sometimes we want a quick implementation without having to code all the logic to determine if this element is visible or not, where we will position our activity indicator and other tasks related to implementing an activity indicator specifically. To address this, we will use a Nugget package. The Nugget package is named ACR User Dialogues. We will install this Nugget package in each of the specific platform projects as well as in the Net Standard project. So we will go to the Explorer over the solution, not the projects, over the solution. We right click Manage Nugget Packages for the solution. Here we click on Browse and search for user dialogues. The first result that shows up is this ACR user dialogues by Alan Ritchie with 2 million downloads. We will select all the projects and click on Install. OK, we can see in the output that the packages were successfully installed and a new tab appears with a readme txt. This file points out the supported platforms and also shows that on iOS and Windows, there is no need to carry out any task. However, we do need to initialize the Android project and the initialization involves adding this line that we have here. So we copy this line that reads user dialogues.init. We navigate to the Android project. Here is our Android project. We open a file named mainactivity.cs. And before load application, we're going to paste this line of user dialogues.init. We need to import the relevant namespace, which is this one, using acr.user dialogues. Once we've done this, we save all the changes close these tabs that we no longer need, and move to the code behind of our page. If you recall, this event handler is where we carry out our task when we press the button. What we're going to do next is add a few lines to display the activity indicator and simultaneously hide the content from the bottom part so that we can't modify any of the controls that are under the activity indicator. To execute this action, we're going to call user dialogues. We need to import the namespace anchor.user dialogues. We put a dot, access the instance, and access a method named showloading. If we look, we have some parameters. We see that we have the primary parameter, which is the title or what will be the message that we're going to show to the user. In our case, we're going to set a title, for instance, analyzing. What this will do is display our activity indicator. We also need a way to know when the task execution ends to hide the activity indicator. 
So in our case, the task is actually this line that reads await task.delay. After this line, we'll indicate user dialogs.instance. And we have a method called hide loading. After hiding the activity indicator, we will display our alert. Let's see how the application behaves with these couple of lines we've added. Okay, we have our graphical interface again. Let's click on the calculate button and notice how this time we have our activity indicator control with the legend analyzing. Let's see if we can modify the values of our text boxes. We click on calculate and notice how everything is locked at this time. It's that easy to implement an activity indicator thanks to this NuJet package. Another common task is to implement the activity indicator, but showing a percentage. And this is so that the user knows or gets feedback on how much is left to complete a certain task. We can also carry out this action thanks to user dialogues. Let's go back to our event handler. Let's remove these lines we saw earlier. I'm going to comment them, and in their place I'm going to put a for loop. This for loop is simulating the execution of a task every second. So this for loop will run 10 times and will apply a delay every second in such a way that the for loop will last 10 seconds. If we wanted to indicate to the user what percentage we have completed of this task, we can do it thanks to user dialogues. We can achieve this by placing a using. We will indicate that we want to create an instance of dialog equal to user dialogues dot instance. We have an additional method called progress. This progress indicates that we can pass a parameter, or a series of parameters rather, and one of them is this parameter title, which is the message we will show to the user while we process the task. Let's set it to processing. Within the using statement, we will cut the code we had from the for loop and paste it here inside. In addition to this for loop we have here, we are going to add, after executing the delay, a new line where we will invoke dialog, which is our progress control, we will use a property called percentage complete, which will be equal to i times 10. This is to multiply the value of each second by 10, that is to have a value from 0 to 100. With this implementation that we have made, let's see how the application behaves now. Let's start the emulator. Let's click on the calculate button and notice how on this occasion we already have our activity indicator, but it is actually a progress bar, which is executing a task and shows us what percentage of this task has been completed. Another common task with activity indicators is that you may want the user to be able to cancel the task in case, for example, they have made a mistake in some way. Let's see how we can implement this also thanks to user dialogues. The first thing we are going to do is declare a boolean variable. We will call it cancelled and set it to false. And the only change we have to apply as part of our using statement is that at the end of this invocation of the progress method, if you notice we have here an action called onCancel. So we are going to implement this action, then as a second parameter of progress, we are going to position ourselves within the parentheses of progress, we are going to put a comma and we're going to indicate that this action will be given by a lambda expression where cancelled will be set to true. As part of the parameter list for the method, we also have a parameter named cancel text. This allows us to show a message to the user, giving them the option to cancel the task. We're going to use this parameter and set its text to cancel. What will actually happen at this point is a new button will appear which gives us the ability to cancel the task. When this button is clicked, it triggers the action. In this case, we only indicate to set the boolean variable we've created called cancelled to true. In other words, we can specify that the task has been cancelled. But really, you can do anything else you want, like executing more complex operations such as undoing some changes to the database, etc. In our case, since we've already set the cancelled variable to true, we can specify within the for loop that it no longer executes this person complete or that it no longer assigns a new value to it. If it does assign a new value, our activity indicator will automatically show up again. Therefore, after performing the task execution, we can check if the task is not cancelled. 
If it's not, then it should carry out the assignment of the percentage based on the value we've calculated. Once we've made these couple of modifications, let's display the application to see how it looks. Let's launch the application. Here we have the application running. We click the Calculate button and notice that our activity indicator shows up here. But this time, in addition to the progress percentage, we have a cancel button. If I click this cancel button, you'll see that the task stops executing, or rather in our case, the cancelled value was set to true, and therefore this percentage assignment is no longer performed. Let's see how our application appears on iOS. We designate the iOS project as the startup project. We initiate on the iPhone simulator. We observe that we have the identical graphical interface here. We click the button and observe that we have the activity indicator here and we have this button to abort the task. All right, with this, we have implemented an activity indicator in a very straightforward way, both on Android and on iOS. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to recommend it to your colleagues or subscribe to the channel and activate the notification bell so you know when a new video is released. See you!